Hello and welcome to ESM Squared, the podcast for experienced social media marketers. I'm Emily and today I'm talking with Christian Miller of 9024 Media, a digital agency specialising in football teams and sportsmen's social media accounts. Christian is Head of Player Services, which he'll explain more about during the interview. And I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Christian for agreeing to chat with me. It's not every day you get to talk about such a specific area of social media. I've really learned a lot and I think that you will too. Let's dive right in. Happy listening. Christian, hello. Thank you for being here today. How are you doing? I'm, I'm as good as I suppose anybody can be at this moment in time. I'm feeling yeah, pretty fortunate um, that we're able to carry on working, so that's keeping me busy. And then kind of personally, um, everyone that I know is fit and healthy, so I can't really ask any more. So yeah, all good. Could you tell me about the agency as a whole and then maybe quickly run me through your job at 9024? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... <sighs> 9024 Media, we're, um, we're a specialist um, social media agency that only focuses on football players. Um, so pretty unique, um, pretty good for, for us football lovers that, that work here. Um, and kind of as a business, we've got two facets to it. We, um, we kind of split it into two, um, which is our player services offering, um, which I can tell you a little bit more about in a second, and also our commercial offering as well. Um, so basically how we work is the player services team or our social media experts. Um, that's the team that will have the day-to-day contact with the players, come up with social media content, have relationships with the platforms and kind of ultimately execute everything that, um, that we think will help to enhance a player's social media presence. And then how we then work with, with commercial is pretty simple. Um, if we manage to get kind of high frequency with a player, we get the engagement rates really high. Off the back of that, we see audience growth. And then at that point, it makes the commercial team's job really easy. So they can pick up the phone to a brand and say, hey, we've got X player that is talking about this kind of sector all the time. Their engagements are brilliant. Do you want to go and do a brand deal with them? Yes job done let's let's go and do it so that's how we kind of work um, as, a, as a team and then my role is I'm head of player services so um, as I mentioned all those different aspects and elements that go into delivering kind of good social media content that's my responsibility so luckily I've got three not departments because we're not a massive company but we've got three different strands of our player services team that I kind of oversee which is creative um, relationships and also editorial which is something that we we introduced kind of about 18 months ago now so we've got uh, different people working in those kind of teams and they're the ones that are delivering on a day-to-day basis so they make my job really easy and um, can you tell me what's it like managing celebrity accounts on social media uh, obviously sportsmen in particular because I imagine there is a lot of contracts with sponsors maybe how do you manage all the details surrounding like image rights and stuff like that yeah, I mean, the key to, to things like that um, is to make sure we have a really sound onboarding process every time we bring a player into into the company. Um, so we tend to, to have what we call a one-on-one session where we'll sit down um, with the player, agent, partner, um, best friend, mum, dad, dog, <laughs> anyone that's kind of close to, to that player that has got real interesting insight and has got the knowledge that we need to be able to deliver things kind of a, in an engaging way, but B, so that we're not stepping on any toes or causing any issues for the player with club, with an Adidas or a Nike or a Puma or whoever they're boot dealers with, or other sponsors if they're, kind of, they're working with headphone companies or anything like that. Um, we make sure that we get that information on this one-on-one session that we have right at the outset. Um, so it's crystal clear for everybody, both us when we're making organic content, but also the commercial team when they're going out to market, they know who and who to speak to, who not to speak to, based on on what the players already got in place. So that that kind of side of things is it doesn't take up a massive amount of, of our time, to be honest. Um, when we do the onboarding, um, we've got a questionnaire that we use as well when we bring players on. So it's pretty straightforward. So the actual kind of day to day is not a major kind of issue thinking about breaking any IP rights issues or things like that because it's all kind of there straight away from the outset for us. Great okay Uh, name dropping time tell me about some of the accounts you're managing uh, as many as you're allowed to mention Um, maybe what their needs and goals are how you're able to help them out. 
Yeah, no, no problem. Um, I guess the most exciting one for us, um, I'll, I'll tell you about the, the kind of the latest player that we, we've signed, which is Lucy Bronze. Um, so we, we've not had a female footballer in our roster for a long time. Um, and, it, and it's an area that we've been really keen to, to, to grow. Um, so the opportunity came to work with Lucy Bronze, who, while well, she's in the top three players in the world, unbelievable footballer, won the Champions League three years in a row, just come back to, to England from Leon to sign for Man City. Um, so that's really exciting for us to work with her. Um, and, and she just wants to, to kind of really professionalise what she does on social media, like everything that she does... Um, on the pitch is super professional away from the pitch super professional um, so now we just want to work with her to make sure that everything on social is extremely professional with an eye on making sure that we're kind of building her up towards the the big competitions that are upcoming in the women's game um, you've got the Euros coming up we've got the Olympics coming up um, so we want to make sure that she's in a place on social to really capitalise on what we, we know will be a big talking point um, definitely in England and across the world if um, if the World Cup recently is anything to go by so um, that's what we're working towards with Lucy which is really exciting uh, and then further afield I guess for me two two legends that we work with because we're not only working with current players like Lucy we've got a whole portfolio of players that we class as legends recently retired players so we work with Clarence Seedorf which is unbelievable for us he's probably the most decorated footballer, especially Champions League footballer in history. Um, he's got kind of thoughts and kind of opinions on so many kind of socially relevant topics that even now we're not talking about football day to day with Clarence. He's got other interests and other passion points and things that he wants to kind of get out there to influence change. But it's just a, a completely different mindset for us working with Clarence and Again, super, super kind of exciting player, but for completely different reasons to what, to why Lucy is so exciting. We've got Memphis Depay, who plays for Leon. I should have maybe mentioned Memphis, actually, because he's, he's a social expert on his own. He's, um, he, he's kind of one of the, the generation of footballers that have, got, have grown up with social, understand it, are able to do it all themselves. Um, so what we've done with Memphis with our relationship is kind of um, open up new avenues based on the success that he's already bringing himself on social. So um, we've just opened a line of kind of branded products um, for Memphis called Memphis to buy clothing. And we've collaborated with him to do everything um, for that. And get we launched that two weeks ago, which is actually quite exciting for us as a business. It's the first time that we've not only done things online with players and digital, we've now started to do phys like bring the kind of digital world into a physical world um, with Memphis Depay clothing. So he he's a really interesting guy um, and it's really interesting what we're doing with him, slightly different to what we do with all our other players, but it, we think it's going to be a blueprint um, for a lot of other footballers um, to utilise their audience these big, big audiences that they get, like 10 million followers Memphis has on Instagram only, um, and, and use that to be able to sell clothing and make money um, using their own audience instead of like, I don't know, being just the, the kind of mouthpiece for a brand. So now it's like, right, okay, let's switch it and make his kind of Memphis's audience the audience that, um, that we're trying to sell his own clothing to. So that, that's an interesting one. And I think you mentioned that you mainly use Instagram um, for the players. Is that the most strategic platform that you have for them? Um, I think the, the players would all say that, um, that Instagram is the one that they are most comfortable with and they want to be on. Um, I think from our perspective, I definitely agree that, that Instagram is the one that you can kind of really brand a player. You can obviously show passions really easy with it being so visual. But it's not just Instagram that we have a focus on. Twitter is also massive for us. Um, we still see it as the, the best place to get fan engagement, to create kind of um, conversation, both two-way conversation, because I think with Instagram, that's a little bit of a, a kind of a, a monologue rather than a dialogue, whereas, whereas Twitter is very much more of a, a conversation platform. So when we, we, we think about ideas, it's kind of which, where does it sit? Twitter or Instagram, and then less so now Facebook, 
Um, but less of the focus now is on Facebook for, for footballers. I think there's been a big switch in the algorithms to kind of promote more friend, family kind of relationships on Facebook rather than athlete and brand. Um, so it's been more and more difficult for us to see real growth on Facebook, whereas Instagram and Twitter, we really see it as a place where players can not only be active on there, but actually kind of continue to grow and do it in a really authentic way to the platform. Um, cause I think that's one of the things that our editorial team will continue to bang on about all the time is making sure the content is fit for platform and with Instagram and Twitter we can really see where content can fit organically for players whereas perhaps Facebook not so much and then things like TikTok and Snapchat are kind of more dependent on the player really um, it's less of a platform that we can create content for to post for the player it needs to really be the player creating it and posting it themselves maybe with us helping them a little bit strategically so yeah from our perspective instagram is probably number one and closely followed by twitter um i want to touch on the on on who posts the content a little bit later on um first of all can i just ask you about target audiences i'm thinking about the brands that i have interviewed so far they have a very specific target audience but then they also target other small niches you know there are there are many different um, types of audience that they're targeting I imagine that you do your targeting depending on the player is there more than one audience or is it purely football fans is there a certain bracket age bracket for example or can you tell me a little bit more yeah um, I guess with footballers by default a lot of footballers get a lot of followers and a lot of audience just by signing for a football club like you sign for Man United and you're guaranteed to, to get about 500,000 new Manchester-based fans that are maybe between, I don't know, 14 and 35, boys and girls, men and women. Um, but that, that that's default, that's not f like from us doing anything. Um, so then when we look at it, we, we kind of, we just have to be very much aware of kind of the former clubs that the players used to play for. So is there still growth there? Um, because say if a player's played for Fenerbahce in Turkey for, for, a, for two or three years, we know how passionate the fans are there and it's still a growth area that we can tap into by showing kind of content like flashbacks and throwbacks and things like that to develop that audience. We also need to think about, um, well, think about when the player does sign for a new club, how do we best go about making sure that we resonate with those fans because even if they they follow doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to see all your content. I'm sure you know all the algorithms mean that you need to have an engaging profile to be able to be seen by people. So I guess it's a mixture of that kind of thing, making sure that we're thinking about all the previous audiences that the player had and creating content for that, but then also making really engaging content that the new audience, kind of club-related, will be able to say, ah, yeah, actually, I'm going to like that, I'm going to comment on that, I'm going to retweet it if it's on Twitter. So that's the kind of club element of, of how we define audiences and, and look at kind of creating specific stuff. But then the big challenge for us, and I think this is where we add real value to players, um, is stuff completely away from football. Um, so going back to that one-on-one -on -one session that I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, that session is all about figuring out what are the passion points and interests of players that people have no idea about because as a social media user, I see a footballer kind of once a week playing football, I see the interviews you do, you get a kind of a flavour for their personality and, and what they're about but what you don't know is kind of behind the curtain what the player is interested in, um, if it's fashion or if it's gardening or it's some niche um, interest. So as soon as we find out from the player, right, okay, that's something that you're passionate about. Say, take for example, Jay Rodriguez, Burnley striker, um, playing in the Premier League at the moment. He's massively into, um, well, two things I could mention. One is is music. He's huge into music, uh, and not the kind of the, the kind of cliche footballer uh, music like your, your hip hop and, and rap. Um, into like stone roses and oasis and kind of actual bands and, and a little bit more rocky music so we want to showcase that so then then we start to think right what do the audience that's going to engage with with that kind of content want to see how can we showcase that in an engaging way so that's when we start to think about the the kind of the things that those audiences would normally engage with and bring that into the content that we create for a jay rodriguez similarly he's massively into 
VW camper vans and going camping. So again, what kind of stuff is there out there at the moment that that audience is engaging with that we can then use as little kind of bits of gold dust when we're creating content with J-Rod. So yeah, th th there's quite a lot of elements actually when I talk about audience um, kind of definition and, the, and that is different for every single player. So at the moment we've got 20 players signed up um, so we have to go through that process for every player and figure out what's right for them and what people want to see from them and make sure it's it's really authentic to their personality, which is obviously another big thing that we need to make sure that we do. Yeah, it's really interesting that you're able to to go away, come away from football and create content around other areas as well. Yeah, often that's the most exciting stuff that we do, to be honest, because after match, it's quite limited. Your team wins you kind of got a couple of, of options of imagery that you can put out there. Video is a little bit more difficult to, to kind of get hold of after games. So that kind of football content is very samey, samey. And it's, it's a big pillow for us, that, a pillow, pillar um, for us, that we, we need to make sure that that's there frequently so that you kind of, going back to that audience definition, you're making sure that Man United fans get served the content that they want to see of you playing in a Man United shirt, performing and being proud in it. And that's kind of your, your frequent stuff. And then the, the more exciting stuff then is, right, we've got... A, Jay Rodriguez is also into golf. So recently we had a shoot with him and we were like, let's go and do a golf shoot, but have a winner come along and show that interest. And then, right, okay, what can we do creatively with a photo shoot about golf? Because we're not... I haven't got a hands time behind a the back there on what we can push out and when we can push it out and kind of being limited with the assets so often the non-football stuff is the more exciting stuff that we do with players which sounds mental because in my opinion football is the most exciting thing in the world so it's 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 a kind of a bizarre mindset that we get into but I think um, again we're very lucky to be doing it. That actually brings me on to the content first content question I wanted to ask you which was does your team uh, curate or create all of the content yourselves or does the player sometimes ask for a specific post about a specific topic or are you like fully in charge of the editorial content? Um, it, again, it differs player by player. Um, the, the dream is to have it collaborative. Like That's the absolute dream. Um, we want a player um, that's that engaged with the whole process of what we're trying to do, that they are coming to us with um, with suggestions for for posts and for maybe content themes. Um, so I don't know. I think the majority I'd suggest is us coming up with ideas, us coming up with kind of um, retweets or looking through the social to, to find opportunities. But the key thing is um, that players will approve absolutely everything. Um, nothing will ever go out regardless of if it's their idea or our idea um, without them approving it. Um, they can, of course, come up with their own idea, um, run it past us and us maybe say, not sure about it, but they can still go and post. They've got free reign to do whatever they want. We'd never like stop them from doing anything. We'd advise against some stuff maybe or advise to, to do some stuff. But the key for, for the footballers um, and just them, because I think... It's a slightly different thingy, but them giving away the responsibility of their social channels is quite a big thing. I'd feel a little bit nervous as well. So um, it's having that trust in place to be able to, to let the players know that, yes, we've got um, password access to the counter and yes, we can post whatever we want, really, but we'd never do that because it's so important to have that relationship and that trust with the player so that they know that they can approve everything and nothing goes out before that point so yeah majority going back to your question is us suggesting things to players but everything will be approved by player before it gets posted by us yeah the trust element is so important i mean i can imagine even i wouldn't give my password to anybody but these people are in the public eye and they have millions of followers it's uh it's a big big thing that you've uh that you've got to take care of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and you see that at the beginning that when when we onboard players, when one of the first questions that we'll, we'll ask is, um, do you mind us having password access so that we can go in and post and kind of look at notifications that you get in so that we can react to things? And there's always kind of a little bit of trepidation at first from players like, oh, and you can see that the cogs 
going over in their mind like oh does that mean they can see my dms oh yeah it does so I, ooh, do i want to give them <laughs> my password access uh, oh they could post whatever they want so yeah it's definitely a trust exercise um with the players as you say they've got millions and millions of followers one mistimed tweet or something not quite not quite right can yeah have massive massive impact on a player so key for us to do that and that's the job of our relationships team going back to again the setup of 9024 within our player services we've got a relationship management team uh, and they're dedicated to kind of building relationship with player and agent to be able to get password access to know the player inside out so that we're only suggesting things that they will say yes to and the more that they say yes to it without really having to think about it obviously the trust builds and builds and builds and then in the past we've had players that have just said to us lads just do whatever you want and we've got to a point where we don't have to get approval from them um, which for us just thinking socially is ideal. So, for example, let's talk about the World Cup in 2018. Um, great examples there. We had four players, England players, in the in the squad, um, and obviously it was a great World Cup. We got to the the semi-finals. London was just party central for 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 four to six weeks. But the players, as soon as they come off the pitch, the the kind of optimum time to be posting is within like half an hour, 45 minutes of the final whistle happening. That's when all the buzz is happening on social, the conversation's kicking off. Every Everybody back home is tweeting and wanting to see what the players um, will say about it. So if we haven't got password access and if we are reliant completely on the player to be able to post things or approve things, they kind of, you have a lag then because they'll come off the pitch, they'll have, um, they'll have to do their interviews, they'll have the debrief with the team, they'll have to get showered, all these kind of things get in the way of posting. I mean, it's a footballer's life and obviously that's a priority, but from our perspective as a social company, we want to be able to get things across to the player as soon as the final whistle goes, get approval and post ASAP. Even better than that, not even have to get approval because they trust us so much that they will just say, lads just do whatever you want to do and we had one player um during the world cup that that said that to us and um yeah some of the the content that we got out for for him in particular was fantastic and yeah the the kind of data backed it up that if you 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 post quickly and really kind of tap into that conversation as it's happening that's when you're going to get the best results Absolutely. Best time to post, very specific best time to post, but the engagement follows every time. If you hit it right, it, it really, really pays off. Just coming back to, you were talking about the rise and fall of the of a player's image, like how how it can be different to post for somebody who's doing really well compared to somebody who's, whose team isn't doing so well. I mean, how do you deal with that? Because they, the image must fluctuate with every match. Yeah, yeah, it is difficult. And what we say to players is consistency is key as much as possible. Like we understand that there's going to be um, waves, big moments and, and obviously low moments. But if if your following can get used to you posting about certain things on a regular basis, kind of come rain or shine, come good moments and bad moments, then it kind of negates the any kind of negative reactions and comments that you might get so obviously when there's a real high we'll make the most of it we'll up the frequency and we'll kind of create more content and push it out um, and kind of similarly if there is a bit of a low we might take a bit of a step back but continue to have um, some level of consistency with posting um, as I say so that fans and followers can't say oh you're focusing too much on on your social media um, because if you're posting the kind of a similar amount when you're doing well as when you're not doing so well, it's just a kind of a complete flat line. So I don't think anybody can really say anything. Of course, if they're having a really, really, really torrid time, the player might say, guys, I just want to kind of keep it low key. And again, because they get approval on anything, that's absolutely fine. Um, and we make sure that we kind of honour that and, and work around that. But yeah, with the majority of players, I think they have an understanding of even if those bad moments are happening, they should still be posting, still being honest and authentic with fans. Because even content that is kind of raw and admitting that the the player or the team isn't performing well, that can make great content. Fans like to see that done in the right way, of course. Um, 
but they they want to see that. So it's our job to to give the player confidence to still post in those low moments, but as long as they're doing it in the right way. And that's what us as an agency we're here for. With with that's our expertise really to judge what the the kind of vibe is on social, um, and then react to it when we we we're, we're suggesting posts to players. It's an interesting strategy. I like the idea of staying consistent. Last question. Which metrics do you pay the most attention to when you're reporting back to your clients? And who is it that you actually report back to as a side question? Yeah, let's do that first then. Um, different for, for every every player. I know I keep saying this, um, but I think you probably hear this a lot from agencies. On a lot of occasions, you'll have the relationship will, will start with an agent. So we will we'll, we'll make contact with an agent, we'll develop a relationship with the agent, the agent will then say, right, yeah, okay, actually I want to put this forward to X player, then we'll get introduced to the player. Um, uh, well, in some circumstances, it'll go agent as a whole, so the business of the agent, and then the individual agent that looks after the player, um, so it'll go from business to agent to then player. So does that make sense, that kind of, that flow? Um, so it depends then, um, how much kind of involvement each of those kind of different stakeholders continue to have. Um, so often if, if our services are paid for by the business himself, we'll have to report back to the kind of the top guys that we spoke to in, in the kind of first instance. If they kind of go, no, I'm happy just to, to pan things over now to, um, to player and agent, it'll just be getting fed back to, to the player and agent. And in some instances, the players, I, I'm not, too bothered to be honest guys as long as like I can see that um, we're posting regularly um, I, I don't really mind about getting any of the metrics sent back so probably majority would be going back to the agent um, is who we'd report to um, players only bothered about um, their audience growing <laughs> which is kind of understandable but then your second question what do we look at um, the formula that we work from and it's well, it's not specific to us, it's not rocket science. Um, we look at frequency, first of all. Um, if a player's not posting, you've got zero chance of, of growing. So it's the most basic, obvious thing ever, but making sure that the frequency um, is at a good level. So we check that on a monthly basis, both across kind of stories on in feed, if it's on Insta, um, and then tweets and retweets on, on Twitter. But... I kind of guess the then the the main one is the engagement rate. So if we get that engagement rate up, um, and combine that with a high frequency, then you're definitely definitely going to get your followers, which the player wants to see. So for us internally, it's is the frequency high, or maybe not high because that might not be what's necessary based on the circumstances of a player. But is the the frequency right? And then if the frequency is right, right, okay, how's the engagement rate doing? Is the quality of the content good enough? Maybe not. That's why the engagement rate's low. So we need to make sure we do better quality content that's more um, kind of specific to different audiences. If that then is in a good place, then we know that the audience will take care of itself. But with a brand, if you're looking after a brand social media page, there's never really anything that, that kind of dictates if you can post or not. Like on a day-to-day, -day, but if, if a brand says, right, okay, our our strategy is that we want to post three times in feed per day. There's there's never really anything that can stop that bar, like some kind of natural disaster or you know, something like that that will get in the way of the posting happening. Whereas with a footballer or an athlete in general, there's so many different kind of variables that maybe will affect if a player will post on, even down to just their mood on the day. If a player is just feeling a bit lethargic or tired or a little bit down, they might just like, you know what guys, I don't really fancy posting today. So then for us, the frequency becomes a really kind of key thing that we need to monitor because it's not a given that we'll get kind of five, six, seven, eight posts during a month in feed from a player based on all the things that could potentially go wrong with it, with an athlete, with a person. Um, whereas like I say, with a brand, you can pretty much get consistency without anything um, anything kind of affecting that. So yeah, that, that's why we, we start with the frequency. Once we've got that kind of bob on, then we can look at the uh, the engagement rate to see what the quality of the content is, is kind of creating engagement-wise. Yeah, you're right. It's really different. 
Let's go for the quick fire questions. Number one, what takes up the most of your time as a social media professional? Uh, coming up with content ideas that aren't football related. Um, yeah, that's 100% it. Because on a weekly basis, we need to, to make sure that we have other content that is kind of supplementing the football content. So that then becomes difficult because a lot of the players often will be like, I just want to talk about football, football, football. And we're like, well, that's great. But if you want to really kind of get brand interest and you want to grow your followers to a different kind of audience segment, you're not going to do it. So yeah, coming up with that. And also, I know it's a, it's a one word answer, really. Sorry. Um, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pitching to players and persuading them to do things. Like, because, again, they're professional footballers, their mindset is always football. Um, so if we say, right, we've got this idea, they'll always be like, oh, not sure. So you spend a lot of your time being like, honestly, we're the experts, please trust us, let's do it. And even if there's some one, one occasion, we do it, we evaluate it, and if we don't do it again, at least we're giving it a go. But we can be pretty kind of sure that it's going to perform well. So, yeah, I suppose it's that. Coming up with ideas different to football, and then with those ideas... Getting the players buy-in um, takes up a lot of time. In your opinion, the player with the best Instagram account, not necessarily your client. Instagram yeah. or just social? Okay, go social. Go whole, whole of social. The reason I say that is because I, I can't not mention Marcus Rashford and what he's doing at the moment. That That is like the best use of social media that there is. Raheem Sterling did a similar thing um, when he started to raise a lot of awareness for all the, the, the kind of the race hate that was this kind of out there. Um, so that kind of thing, when you've got a platform and you can open your platform up to make kind of real um, tangible change to a social issue is brilliant. Obviously, it's not right for, for all footballers. So at the moment, Marcus Rashford's um, Twitter account is, is obviously fantastic. And then in terms of maybe somebody visually, let's, let's do something completely different. So you've got some, like, somebody there, Rashford, that is, is doing something that's kind of affecting change. Then maybe somebody like... I don't know, a, a Karim Benzema, uh, Real Madrid and, and, well, former French international forward. His actual content that he creates, visually, how it looks, is brilliant on Instagram. The kind of, the techniques that get used in videos that he's in, um, the image treatment that gets put on his lifestyle content. Um, it's really cool. It's really cool, but it's completely different. Um, but his, obviously, positioning is to, to be a very fashionable, very cool, very smooth um, footballer um, and I think he does it does that as long as I've got his positioning right I'm guessing his positioning right it is cool but two completely different different ways of doing social but both really good uh, you're obviously a football fan yourself who would be your dream player to have as a client at 90-24 well I know the question was the first thing that came into your head and the first one that came into my head and he's not a footballer anymore and uh, I think every person on the planet would probably say the same thing, but David Beckham would be the one. Like, pff, unbelievable, what a guy. Um, but no, if I do somebody that is still playing, um, football that I'd love to sign at the moment. It'd be, it'd be nice to have somebody that, that's, that's got a, a real story to tell away from football. Um, big personality would be really cool. Who could it be that would be really good at the moment? Um, Jaden Sancho would be quite nice. Um, playing in Germany at the moment, England international, young lad still. I think there's a lot that could be done with his social, so he'd be cool. I should think of this as an acquisition tool. I could, I could, I could really kind of be really nice to a footballer and hope that he hears it. <laughs> I would personally like to sign a couple more England players at the moment. We've got players all around the US, um, Europe. A um, couple of England players, but I'd like another English player in the uh, in the portfolio. So I'll go with Jaden Sancho. It'd be nice to sign. Great. And the last one is: What would your ultimate advice to community managers be? Um, don't be afraid to be on social media. I say this to all of our relationship managers. It's a as a social media company, it's like bizarre because we your job is to be on social in any other walk of life if you're sat at your desk nine to five looking on social media throughout the day your manager would come up behind you and be like what oh, get off that what are you doing um but i say to them like be on it all day every day um and also don't think nine to five we say this all all the time with our players footballers aren't nine to five they have got the most crazy sleeping had habits their days are 
completely different every day. Um, so think in the same way, be active on social in the evening um, when when people who are finishing work go on and, and speak to, well, just talk about anything on social. Um, so yeah, be, be, be active all day and don't stick to nine to five. Don't just switch off um, as soon as you, you kind of, your working day finishes, be be on there to be able to, to kind of react to something as it happens um, at any time of day, which all my team will hate me saying, <laughs> but it's true. You need to, as a, as a social person, you need to be on there all the time. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I spent uh, like half the day on TikTok for research. It's a different mindset, right? Like, say it to, like, I say it to the guys all the time, be on social, be like, I'd be more annoyed to not see you on there than being on there you never know what could what idea could come at any second and I guess that's another thing that like I we don't call we don't have community managers as such we have relationship managers that are kind of re, are responsible for that but just don't be afraid to chuck any idea out to the team like it could be the most bizarre wacky idea ever but somebody else might grab that idea and go actually I've seen this that kind of if we do this and this together, it might, and then somebody else will go, actually, what if you had this? And it just becomes a kind of a, a kind of a snowball effect and you go from a crazy idea to actually having something that you can pitch to players. Um, and I guess kind of going back to what we said at the very start of this conversation when, when we, we, we jumped on, um, touching on, on COVID um, and people being healthy, that's why, that's my reference. Um, but the, the big thing that's, kind of come away from this working from home situation because of COVID is that we don't have the opportunity to brainstorm as much um, as we'd like to because you're not sat around in a room with with your colleagues just to be able to chuck wacky ideas out there and somebody else um, be able to react to it so I guess it's being able to create those moments where you're throwing ideas out but still remotely which is the biggest challenge and kind of the biggest bit of advice is to have as many calls as possible with your colleagues just to to discuss crazy ideas and see what comes of it sometimes it can be a bit tedious and no ideas will will come of it but yeah just keep keep at it stay positive when it comes to those kind of things um bit of a covid detour there we took but I think that that's really important for for kind of idea generators to make sure you're still having those conversations with colleagues to to create these these mad ideas that end up being yeah massively engaging on social it's good advice thank you again christian for your time and for all of the insight into what it's like uh, managing the social media profiles of the famous sportsman football clubs that you have uh, it's been a pleasure chatting with you and a um, special shout out from all of the football heads here at Icon Square. Thank you for having me. It's been, uh, it's been great. Hopefully uh, some of the insight will be useful for the people that are listening. I've learned a lot. Good. I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Mm-hmm.